All right. Good morning. 8.34 a.m. on Monday, March 23rd, 2020. I have not uh, picked up the recorder in quite a while. Uh, I think it's been well over a month, if not longer. And we've got, in our world at present right now, some pretty big shit taking place. And, um, I, I mean, literally, quite literally, the globe is, for all intents and purposes, shut down in terms of business, interaction, living as normal. This will definitely be a time we all look back upon as, at a minimum, a time of shared experience. It isn't an exaggeration to say that damn near every human being on this planet is being affected in some way by what is taking place. The only ones I would imagine are not as affected are, are the ones completely literally technologically not in touch the most rural of tribes you know and villages small villages in places like Africa is what comes most to mind uh, Africa perhaps some South American places and perhaps some places in parts of Asia as well I don't know the numbers well enough, but China and India, pretty enormous, representing a huge chunk of the globe's population, and even in the most rural places of India, you know, it's, it's so much smaller than the whole continent of Africa, so I just, energy-wise, it's almost like it could be transmitted, <laughs> even, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's really fascinating. I just let it go. It's really fascinating if one is able to sort of just feel the energy, just feel it without, without labeling it, without categorizing it without understanding it, just simply feeling it. What do you mean, feeling it? I don't know what I mean. Feeling, however you feel, feeling it, feeling it. And then if you add on that, take away verbal expression, right? Because I'm, tr I'm trying to play with this. I'm trying to play with this. At the level, if you will, God, I, I don't like using it, but that's what I'm being guided to use because, you know, it is like an enormous video game. We are all part of an enormous video game, movie, like, like use whatever metaphor that you want, but video game sort of, I think, depersonalizes it, dehumanizes it a bit. And I think. A lot of people still, you know, it's it's an uncomfortable thing to many when the veil of the illusion is, re, you know, begins to be removed. When more and more and more is seen as, holy shit, I was so naive, just didn't know. It's not about making you feel stupider if you didn't know. It's not about hierarchy anymore. It's not about arbitrarily... 
identifying something as better than something else. It might be bigger, somebody's idea, somebody's energy, some, it might be a bigger idea, a bigger role in that person that that soul chose to play in that person, but it's never better. It's never better. It just is. We all came here and we're, we're certain parts of the video game. We're certain characters in the movie. We agreed to play those characters. But we do have a say. We do have a say in how our character evolves. If you watch any... I use Grey's, Anat Grey's Anatomy, which, no, it's nowhere near as good as it used to be, but it is still something I watch. I watch each episode every week at some point during the week because there's still a lot of deep, deep layers of meaning for me with Grey's Anatomy. And they just, you know, wrote off Alex Karev's character. Alex Karev, oh my God, it's, it's really one of the most brilliant character evolutions I think because I, I think it's challenging to uh, write if you will from a from an artist perspective of, a, of writing a character either in a book or a movie or a film or a play I think it's particularly challenging to to write like to actually you know you can see it, it just say it a man's evolution versus a female character. Now, first and foremost, that's because I'm living in a female character. So as much as I can, I think I can empathize and, and connect with the masculine experience, clearly there's a big gap in this particular life of what that experience would have been. And, and one of the big things I think we could collectively do is, God, just give one another the space where... Just don't assume that somebody's using it for the worst sort of way. Think of, you know, using the energy. Like if somebody, if a, if a strong female you know ever comes to you and tries to express something that she feels is being experienced differently in a drastically, in a substantial way, a statistically significant way, because she is a female, give her the benefit of the doubt. And actually try to feel on behalf of the other beings that chose the male's body. And and sorry, I'm assuming as if I was presenting this to a male. Because this is one of the strings that's really um, being plucked right now in my life. Is, is once again the relationship, the dynamic with myself. And, um, you know... If I were to say it directly, I, I do think the human character of Allison needs a fucking masculine energy to, at this time, to be able to reflect back where she's at. And, and that means that she's got, it's got to be a close masculine energy. It's got to be somebody with whom she's interacting in because Allison is that different when she's in her home doing her thing than out in any current role. Because the current roles, I mean, that's part of, like, this, for the, for the character of Allison, this tension that really no one on the outside really grasps how fucking wound tight she is here. And the tension is because there's such a vast difference in opportunities that she has right now in her life that she can perceive that she can actually see and thus act upon and take make the free will decision to choose to pursue these opportunities and she still is perceiving it to be something from the outside somebody like offering her a position or offering her part of something or 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 in her dream scenario recognizing like really by feeling just fucking feeling. I don't expect any. Nobody has a clue to what extent I've been following this polling of the one energy, and 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 the direct way of of saying what that means is. It's it's. I mean, there are. 
I just can't do it justice with words. Because it's the difference between remembering that you are an expression of the greatest energy in this in the whole fucking universe. Look at it from a religious perspective. Look at it from a scientific perspective. It's the same magnitude of amazing holy shitness. And knowing you are a part of that. You are that. And what a responsibility that means when you truly get that. When you know that you're an expression of that and 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 you're you're just guided naturally to be the best reflection of that that you can be to be the best channel of that and that is what we label as god source cosmos universe spirit the one light like all that is all of this that we're experiencing is that when you really fucking get that holy shit you can play with the simplest of things with energy in the most insanely beautiful ways. So in this dimension of earth, so when something like this virus with all these infinite intersections of energy now all sort of together, it's like we've all been brought together well, whether we liked it or not. A big part of me and my unique to Allison's character's processing of this has been, I haven't had a TV in 12 fucking years. I don't pay attention to the media. I love not paying attention to the media. It truly doesn't bother me. I can't ever say that since making that choice when speaking to somebody who's projecting their own opinions of my choice, right? And that goes from family to friends to people I know to strangers sharing with me when I, you know, when I say I don't vote, I don't pay attention. I, now that I know the re quote unquote, the greater reality that I'm getting and feeling, and that's real for me. And I know that I'm not alone in this and, but I want to experience the world with people who are able to understand, whoa, Reality is completely up for me to agree to at any given moment. It's whatever I want to agree to see is real. And when you know it's all equal, you can pick anything and recombine it again and again and again in totally different ways the next second, the next day, the next week. You can try this reality because it, it's all about what you focus your attention on. And that's like feeding the energy and then it, the physical manifestation of it is the last piece. And I'm bound, okay, just let it bounce, let it bounce. So you just, I just, today I needed to finally capture somehow, some way, the immobilization that I have felt since this virus and being forced to pay attention to the media and take in so much more than, I mean, that's like the most media I've taken in in the past three weeks Probably it's not an exaggeration to say the past three years. So I'm kind of on overload because I'm not used to, I'm not used to that energy. And then my mom, God love her, best, amazing, unprecedented visit. She ended up being here five days longer than originally planned because of the virus. All the virus news hit while she was here. And to experience that, and she today's only my second day, full day alone without her. And so I am recalibrating big time because as great as a trip as it was, as amazing as it was, the glaring reality is the frequency of my mom and I on the things that we can connect on, even that is sort of limited despite it, but at least we can connect on certain things now where that, that I couldn't find anything to connect there for a long number of years. You know, pretty much my, most of my teens and my 20s, I, 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 I couldn't see any way to really connect to my mom. So the fact that we've found our way energetically to connecting at the depths that we now are at this time in our respective lives is pretty fucking great. However, the vast majority of, of who I am and, and, and what I'm, to what extent I'm consciously living each day of my life um, you know, like we're just so different in the way, like mom just can't grasp 
the idea that my soul came here and chose her and chose my dad and chose these circumstances and that I continue to choose and have to choose with each, you know, that's, that's part of like living the journey. Your, your, it's the free will in this dimension of earth. We have free will. Um, we have to, you know, we have to make the choice, but interestingly, we also have the great, we're wired as, as vessels, as machines, the machine as of the human body is wired in such a way where it's really funny, but you can get people to choose things that doesn't serve them. Very powerful. You get people to actually choose to hurt themselves. Ooh -ho. And you know, that's, that's the, that's the crazy thing about exactly the, the magnitude of what is going on right now. Cause man, more than ever before, anything fucking goes right this second. Anything like you, no one could have predicted this to be real. No one. I mean, yes, 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 yes. We definitely saw parts of it. That's why that graphic that my AP English teacher shared on Facebook was so amazing. It was this great Venn diagram, multiple Venn diagrams and intersections and unions of the Venn diagrams of some of the greatest, you know, classic books that we, a lot of us, most of us read in high school, 1984, Animal Farm, and then great movies like The Matrix, Clockwork, Clockwork Orange, um, Soiling Green. I wasn't familiar with that one and I got familiar with it two days ago. And it's, 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 it was brilliant. And it was like this Venn diagram and smack dab in the middle, the grand intersection of all of them was this thing that says you are here. And so obviously we've been exposed, most of us to stories that sort of predict, you know, that, that predict certain aspects of what we're experiencing. But you know, this is like, I feel like it's a hurricane, a massive forest fire, you know, and a blizzard all, all, all at once, all at once. It's like the perfect storm of the worst case scenarios. Yet, to be honest with you, at least in my neighborhood, boy, this feels nothing like, it. swear to God, it feels like we're at the center of the calm. And I, here's the best thing, I don't think this is uncommon. I think despite the massive, unprecedented effort to make the masses really panic at high, highest unprecedented levels, I feel like the collective is finally... And it, certainly it, there's a, there's this bare minimum of, of energy where it's like you're just immune to it. You're like, all right, I see through this shit. Like, it's all an illusion, man. All of it. What their story is is no more real in the grand scheme of things than your story. Even if it is like a global cabal story, as big as that is and as real as they have made it in the three-dimensional world, which... If you're aware of your character, your character is in the three-dimensional world. You have to remember the rules of the three-dimensional world at a bare minimum enough to keep yourself sort of alive, right? you got to have a presence on the three-dimensional world. I mean, unless you don't, unless you want to check out of that world, in which case people, you know, can do it either natural causes or they end it. They're like, okay, I'm done, you know, and, and suicide or whatever. Like, it's, it's up to the choice of the soul. But if you want to remain to have a physical presence on the three-dimensional earth, which right now, I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't contemplate that this past week. I swear to God, if I'm being honest, I'm like, I mean, not that, not suicidal, but kind of like, pff, geez, man, maybe it wouldn't be such a bad thing to get this flu. I mean, it's horrible. Sound, like, it's a horrible way to die, but it's quick. You know, like, I, you know, I know the difference now of the, you know, putting myself through months and months, if not years and years of misery was all I knew. So it was all I knew. I didn't have anything to compare it to. And ever since my awakening and the, the just the no, point of no return, meaning there was never going to be a point, no matter what, that I would 
fall again in this consciousness to the depths of self-loathing and fear and and believing I was alone because I, I, I finally, like, I'll never not forget that. Like, the human side of me still is going to feel hurt and I'm still going to get close to to that point. But the more I practice bouncing and only getting to a certain, like, I, I can't think of the metaphor other than to say it's been night and day difference. Like, when I fall, I fall, but I have such a different level of awareness what, because I know that I always have a choice. So I kind of try to feel because I, I, I wanted to linger in the feelings of so much hurt because I truly felt like I to move through it and, and say that I was okay with it was almost like betraying it. Like how could I how could I label something that like it was just it hurt so bad because there was so much love. So if I was gonna basically have to agree to see it as being okay, it you know, I just couldn't reconcile all that. But now I know. That by seeing something that's that painful or that scary as okay and just trusting that no matter what, you're okay. Oh my gosh, those are the more, oh, the, the extreme of that, of that journey taken very quickly. It's almost like if you could consciously slow down that instantaneous change. And we're, we're being asked to just consciously slow down right now. And, and, and literally this, this has been exactly what the character of Allison has been working towards for the past decade. And she just needs to start letting the, accepting that for real without the judgment she keeps jumping to. Because when I think that the first judgment that I have of myself, the first yucky feeling that just goes through my whole vessel is, who are you to say that? I mean, you're just so e egotistic. Like I, I feel all the ego stuff that at least a few people and likely a lot more than a few people as I come into my more authentic, complete self and because I know it's so different than what most people know me as, because what they know me as is not untrue, but it's just such a small part of who I've remembered myself to be. That it, it is, I, as I let go and let it all come together now, it's going to just seem like I got to go. I got to go. I got to go all in because it's just too extreme where the, 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 it'll be discredited so quickly because of how extreme it is from the person that they know. But because of these times right now in the extremities of the time right now in the unprecedented nature of what humanity is facing right now and the opportunity to present the craziest and wackiest of ideas, you don't need many physical connections right now because of it, like the exact energy combination. So a big part of me feels like, Allison, each day passes by that you don't figure this out, what you're supposed to be doing and saying and how you're supposed to be sharing it right now. You are, the boat is getting ready to leave, girl. And as I feel that, then I feel like I put more pressure on myself and I, I that doesn't do anything to help. So I'm in like this crazy place where a part of me feels like, like knows, the greater part of me knows that this is exactly what spirit has been guiding through me and preparing me for. And I'm right there and I've been, I swear I've been at this place for over a year now. I feel like I've been it for more than two years or almost two years. Of just, just take the step. Just take the step and trust. You, you may not feel like anybody in your life right now is reflecting back enough of the story so that you don't look crazy. But the reality is, until you take this step, you're not going to see that mirror reflection change. You've not given them really an opportunity. You've not presented yet to anybody but Kathy. The combined energy package, whether it's just your presence, whether it's trying to dis describe it with words, whether it's sharing it with stories, whatever it is. You haven't presented it to the various people in your life from whom you are most eager to share the vision, to see the same vision. 
you 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 haven't you haven't given them an opportunity to show to show you where where they're at if how much they see or don't see and furthermore since you've never experienced it you don't know what it's going to look like you barely know what your own reflection that's what it boils down to you don't even know what out who the character the the more evolved character of Allison aka I'm going to say GD410 right because it's it's like having this awareness I don't know you know think of it like a video game and each level you're you're like a different character a more evolved version of your yourself um and GD410 is at the next level I, I don't know what's beyond that but I have definitely remembered myself to be more than Allison <laughs> without doubt like so much more than Allison and, and I love Allison I love the character of Allison I love the character of Allison for the first time you know in my fucking life in this life I'm not gonna sell out and not love Allison I'm actually being asked to love Allison a little bit more right now and it feels to me like it's like too egotistical and it's so strange because I'm I'm actually loving Allison from GD410 and trying to share that but it's too confusing to people because what do you mean you're not Allison? I'm like, no, I want to share with you the version of Allison that you know even just last month is different than the Allison right now. Especially because of what's transpiring right now. Like, I need to talk to Allison as if she's a completely different person than the person talking to you because she is. I'm going to drop the Oversoul 7 book right now on this recording I was speaking brainstorming with the only person that really can can reflect back anything to me and it's still she's got holds and sees the greatest of the vision from spirit but due just to her age and her own life experience she doesn't have for for me the level that I need in terms of the out in sort of the mainstream world. She's not been part of the mainstream world to large, large, large degrees. Um, you know, well on the other side of the spectrum as compared to most other beings of energy. Um, she's barely been in the mainstream. Uh, in most of her mainstream, she ha she was in it in a, a deep way early in her life but since you know so I just I need a more present day read on like that mainstream world um, that's where C comes into play um, you know she's got such a a unbelievable balance between these energies between what I call kind of the spirit and the the mainstream world the the ego based world where and it's such a fine line because the ego-based world is part of the game of spirit, but you can't play the spirit game without knowing and being aware at a totally different level how the ego game is played. And, you know, you, even if you're choosing to play an ego-based character who doesn't believe, who claims they don't believe in spirit, that's all still can be a story and a perspective told from the place of spirit, but not from ego. Ego, if you don't buy into spirit, for and that's what you're really, the honest story being told, it really is a completely different game. Like mutually exclusive. Peanut, little girl, that's your brother's food. Come on, you little munchkin. You got your food. Anyway, um... This definitely would, <laughs> is only going to be for my ears, but I just woke up, you know, yesterday was the first day without mom. I mean, so fucking much has happened. So fucking much has happened. And her energy is so different than mine. So it, it, it's almost like I'm experiencing the entire past two and a half weeks. So like the whole history of sort of the virus in the U.S., um, took place with my mom here and now I'm like going through it all again on fast forward because I already went through it once but now I'm like going through it with just my energy and not my energy when it's with my mom because my energy when it's with my mom and it's no offense to my mom it's just in order to harmonize best with her I have to kind of hold back a lot of my I have to hold back a lot I don't want to it's not comfortable for me um, especially once I get into like after a couple of weeks, I mean, I was really pushing and I didn't, 
I, I was an asshole to my mom like the last full day we had together on our walk because I just I won't go into the specifics, but I'm I'm you know, I just feel like she's so close from being able to really see things from from a different perspective and she's just not ready to see it that way um and i'll go ahead and say this one because this is a common one you know i i was just i, I struggle with trying to guide her to just being open to to not putting everything it's not trump's fault it's not republicans fault it's not that simple and you know she she falls into that camp like many many people whose blood absolutely boils when you speak about this guy and you know, I've been struggling because I'm trying to work with my mom who's, uh, you know, been raised a Catholic, goes to church every week, except for when she's visiting me. And um, I just am like, mom, you know, how do you follow Jesus? How do you, I don't get it. How do you do that and still hate this guy? Like, you got to just see him as, you know, like, and seriously, in your life, how is your life truly being affected from when this guy became president over Obama, your life. Like, like, I don't care about, no one else is asking you to speak on behalf of them. I'm asking your life, you know, like, so the, and these are tough and it's unfair. She's in her seventies. She's got her opinions to turn certain, to see certain things. You know, it's not an exaggeration to say that the rug of reality can, can and is being pulled out from various individuals and that's why there's a lot of resistance by certain personalities to not see it because on some level they know they chose a character that when and if that character sees how much everything they thought and continue to like their actions show how much trust they have if the worst ca like they can't handle the reality being dude it it could be gone tomorrow like it none of this is permanent man however permanent you think you know these mortgages these insurance pile all this crap all the, like when you recognize that it's all just agreements and why would we agree to systems that you know aren't i don't know i'm bouncing again i just was a jerk to my mom because i wasn't accepting of where her limits were and that doesn't come as a judgment not in any way, shape, or form. It would be no different than if I was a teacher saying, you know, they're, you're in pre-algebra, but you're not ready for algebra yet. You're not ready for geometry yet. Like that's that's all I'm I'm commenting on is the fact is she cannot see Donald Trump from a place of love. She hates that guy. And I'm just trying to say that it's, I'm telling you, it's a very different experience of things when you remove that hate, when you remove that fear, and when you see it all as love. It's a night and day difference. And it's it's almost like it's hard. It's getting increasingly more difficult to choose. You can't choose both. They're like, you, you got to make a choice. You can't have in the physical life, I can't be living this story and this story. Um, now, now with the greater awareness and the veils being removed of, hey, there's all kinds of stories going on here. And it doesn't do you any good to judge any story as better or worse than your own. You know, I'm telling you, just trust that they're all equal. They're all valid. They're all real to some, to, to, they're all real to whomever is agreeing to tell that story. You know, then you experience that. It, it gets into sort of that TV program lost. And, and when I started to dive into, and I did not get it on my own. I saw lost at only, I was only able on my own to see that from the very surface level mainstream perspective. That was right at my awakening. But a close friend at the time, somebody that was right with me as I launched all of this, and I'd be lying if I said it didn't hurt me still that she's not a part. I didn't want to separate. I didn't want to do what I knew I had to do with this particular person, but she's the one that guided me to seeing the deeper layers of Lost. Um, I couldn't see them on my own, yet as soon as she showed me the layer, I, de I was devouring it for a short period of time just the because I also recognize pretty quickly when you can just lose yourself in something and I personally don't want to lose myself too far in somebody else's creation of the energy because I'm really excited to put together an unprecedented creation of my own. You know, I, I, I liken this to a lot of times one of the metaphors I use is like a PhD dissertation. You know, I put myself through my own PhD program uh, of my energy of me. Me, that's the only thing I can know the best and have the most control over. W doesn't it behoove us all to have just this 
enter into all agreements, whether they're just with one person or more, to enter in as these more complete beings, these more conscious beings, it's unbelievable what you can do with, with people who can actually have the final say for themselves and not are like, you know, where it resonates with them, but then they got to make the sale to their boss. And then their boss has to make the sale of the idea to their boss. And then likely that person has to already jump into wasting all this time, putting in, you know, all these numbers and all these, it's just, it's like, Hey, just give me a chance to put in motion. Let me show you the, the, the amount of time it takes now to play these games to actually like, you know, it's it's like the creativity and different ideas, thinking out of the box. I mean, we've forgotten these are the magic. This is the magic of life. And we're, you know, the, the, the energy has gotten us to choose this for ourselves, imprison ourselves and take, take this this magic away from ourselves in this crazy way. And, and all of that's being revealed right now. All the behind the scenes mechanics, the nuts and the bolts. And it's it's... It's beautiful if you can stay at the higher frequency, but I've been, you know, kind of in these lower frequencies, meaning just reading news that I know is not news. It's not news for my day. So why do I got to look at this? Um, that's been obviously my attitude since 2000, since giving up my TV in 2008, but I was forced to check in one because I had somebody here who for her well-being my mom needed to she needed her media fix she especially with the virus going on so I, I had to allow that and I know that that's a, it's like kryptonite for me like it takes a lot of energy for me to to not judge just that need to have something outside of you tell you what you're experiencing. Like, fuck, mom, what are you experiencing? What do you feel? Stop looking at your watch for a walk. Just tell me when we get tired and then we can go. Like, like, come on, let's tap into our, ourselves here and recognize that you're giving power away, that no one knows you better than you know you. No one knows your news, your life, and what matters to you most. Not when you're super consciously living. Not when you know that literally every choice you make Every word out of your mouth, every action you take or don't take each day is your, like you're responsible and super potentially super powerful. Just one little choice can be the difference between a completely different collection of details of reality for that day than not doing a simple action. Like for instance, just turning this recorder on today. I mean, this, this doesn't have much meaning to anybody but me, and I don't even think it's going to have much meaning to me. But what it is is finally I gave myself permission to have a release point here. Take a different action that I haven't taken because I've just been fearful. I haven't felt like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I just feel like I, immobilized, immobilized by it. Because like I said, in no small way, this is like the moment I've been preparing for. It's like the curtain, uh, the, you know, I've, I've been saying, I've been writing my own play, the star of my own movie, the, the director of my own orchestra. And it's like, I've got this huge energetic audience and the curtain has just been pulled for the start of the show. And I've got like stage fright. I'm like sitting there going, you know, I got the baton to lead my orchestra or I got the, you know, like, like I'm immobilized more than anything else. And I know that a big part of that is, is, you know, just, just practicality. I was sharing the home, my home with my mother and you know, she, she's not particularly, I can't reveal the greater parts of myself. I do, at least I don't perceive myself to be able to do so comfortably because it hurts when somebody that knows you as well just can't see what's right. Like that's not been a fun process to grow through, to be okay that my mom doesn't really see who I am. Like it's cool. She's, she sees more than me than ever before and it's fantastic, but it's like this deep ingrained thing with us. We biologically on the, on the animal side, on the character side, man, I want my mom to see me and accept me and love me and be thrilled, you know, and, and want to shout from the top mountaintops you know, to try to, you know, get more of what I'm channeling and, you know, this love, it's just pure love. Like she, her feeling part, it's got such a different threshold than mine. Like I feel everything so deeply and 
my mom barely, you know, sh watching my kitty cat jump on her lap and her, she doesn't even know how to pet the cat. You know, she's just so uncomfortable with letting go emotionally and feeling wise. And I'm the complete opposite. So it's hard. It's, it's, it's hard. And so I know, like I said, it's, it's, it's like I'm processing this whole fucking thing, this virus thing, the past two and a half weeks quickly, but in a totally different way because the Allison without mom's energy or, or to be honest with you, anyone's energy that was in the home. I mean, anybody's energy for me right now, I'm so sensitive and I need to be wide open for myself. So if I'm wide open energetically in my home for myself, which I have to be, cause I'm trying to feel my way to alignment, you know, like, like I'm, I'm, I can't have an, another being. Uh, the only beans I can have in here are the kitty cats, you know, and I'm close. I'm close. All I need is a short period of time, you know, basically getting this note through my instrument, you know, play it, play it. And it's not a note. It's like a chord, but it's not a chord. It's like a, it's like a composition, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's like I'm a new instrument and I'm, I'm somebody that's never played the instrument before. And rather than just hearing this awkward note, you know, the first thing that's going to come out of me is this like masterpiece of a, of, of, of a song, you know, like certainly from the extent or from the perspective of being somebody who's never even played the, played an instrument really. Now I have, so that metaphor doesn't work exactly with me, but it's pretty fucking close. Like I played piano, but I wasn't a natural pianist, you know, it was just one more thing that the high achieving little kid of Allison, you know, give me a task, I'm going to do it. And I can mechanically get myself through to the A to the best point, right? That highest level. But what, you know, I didn't feel the music like I felt sports because I approached sports in the same way, right? It wasn't like I was consciously aware of this. I just knew, okay, task. I want to, you know, do this task to the best of my ability. It was just, it was more to just trying to align to the best of my ability and, and being aware in this very earth way of the, the need for constant expansion. And I embraced that conscious expansion. I love setting goals and reaching it and changing and evolving. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, but now I have a whole different understanding of it. And, and that began with just an awareness and consciousness of it. Um, okay. I need to conclude this for now. Um, and just be grateful that the energy guided me to do this. Cause I'm hoping it shakes things up because I, I need to not feel immobilized. I don't want to miss a single day, a single opportunity of these magical times and they are magical times and we can come together and tell the story in any way that we want. <laughs> Let's aim for the highest most ridiculous one, because what's more ridiculous than what's playing out in front of us right now? We got nothing to lose. Let's just make up the best damn reality that we can. Talk to you tomorrow.